the War Cup has the perfect entree to start Super Saturday. There's always something special about finals footy, and no better than at grassroots. The Heartlands competition has been played over the last nine weeks. And the two favourites, Buller and Hotapanua Carpeti, were beaten in last week's semi-final. Kia ora everybody and a warm welcome to Tikawiti, Rugby Park in Tikawiti. Tanga o Nga Whakaoro, translated as Tikawiti, the gathering of ideas, home of Rereahu and Ngāti Maniapoto. And the King Country will obviously host North Otago. And North Otago arrive with plenty of confidence as their 15th consecutive final over half the team have made their debuts this year. Plenty of experience up front with Darling and Murphy, but the try scorers wear jerseys number 12 and 13, Masoi and Morris. And the coach is Barry Stevens. Plenty of class. And the bench as well. They've got good players there in Duff, Colini South and Keenan. Are joined in commentary by man who played 51 caps for the Chiefs prop, Ben Castle. And Ben, can King Country finally get a cup of their own? Well, let's hope so, Willie. Good afternoon, everyone, tuning in to the Lahore final. Well, it's after nine years of waiting. King Country are back in the final. As we see their helicopter come in with a team, they're in form, injury free, and they're at home. But they are up against a team who are very used to finals rugby in North Otago. A good side King Country that they have named they've managed to keep out of the injury ward so Brian Lahore has been flowing in so he will get out with the, the trophy what a terrific ambassador he has been that is what they're playing for today so Brian Lahore 46 times he played for the All Blacks in 18 tests was named the captain of the side that played against the Lions in 96 and 1999, inducted into the International Rugby Hall of Fame, Sir Brian Lahore. Oh, what a welcoming for him, and here is the King Country lineup. Very strong across the front row. Captain Aaron Dunster, very, very experienced there, moving through into their experienced back line as well. Look for number 12, Joe Pitawiti, on defence and attack. And in the back there, fullback. James Hamada being named in the Heartland 15. And joining us sideline, one of the best in the business, former All Black Sevens captain Carl Tanana and KT. Love finals footy. Oh, most definitely, William. In perfect conditions, just mid-20s, just enough cloud cover to make it comfortable, but what a perfect Heartland venue. And the locals continue to roll in here at Rugby Park. Game two of finals football. Let's do it. And there is Sir Brian Hall the smile. May have been a little nervous coming in on the, the helicopter, Ben, I'd imagine, but... He's here, and that's the most important thing. And let's just remind you how these two teams arrived here. Third and fourth, Hotafanui Karpati were at the top of the table. They got beaten by North Otago last week. And, of course, 20 to 6 from King Country as North Otago make their way out onto the field. And Salah Halalev, well, here's the results, firstly, as we look at Hotafanui Karpati. Two losses and then the win is here. You can see South Canterbury, the loss. A loss to mid Canterbury, and then in the semi finals, where they came through as fourth best, beating Hardafanua Carpeti by 57 points to 12. And you look at the team, there's plenty of class, in particular Salah Halaleva, lone player from Harbour, eight tries, two hat tricks, one against Buller in round six, and then last week in the semi finals, Carlton great value for North Otago. Well, Willie, I've been looking forward to seeing this kid in real life. He's explosive, a strong ball carrier, and he's been on a try and scoring blitz in his Heartland Championship. As you mentioned, good kid. So there is North Otago and King Country will be playing in the maroon. I'd imagine the, the proud colours of the home side as they make their way out onto the field now. And you can hear the appreciation from a good crowd that have turned up here at Rugby Park having a look at their results. The loss to South Canterbury and then a good one against the West Coast in Week 7. Matched by an even better performance in Week 8 against the East Coast, 60 points to 4. And then last week uh, against the Bullet. And one of the best in the business, Zane Tipping, made his debut in 2013. 25 matches, three tries, 23 conversions, 18 penalties. A good player. Oh, very good player. Last week, the assistant coach, Gareth Williams, talked about their best offensive effort of the season. And that man there, Zane Tipping, very much at the heart of it. 90 points. Be looking for a big game today. And now, with the final, we await the singing of the national anthem. Big moment as well for young Jackson Owen. Then a 
Baron Dunster, the captain of King Country. This is his nephew. He's been given the honour of singing the national anthem here at finals footy for the Lahore Cup of 2015. <laughs> God of nations at thy feet in the bonds of love we meet hear our voices we entreat God defend our free land God pacific triple star from the shafts of strife and war make her praises heard afar God defend you Terrific national anthem, well sung by Jackson Owen. And the scene is set. King Country on the right of your screen as we look at the referee Cameron Stone in charge of today's match. He'll be assisted on the sidelines by Maya Williams and John Dusto. And Grant Stewart is the TMO today. Nice touch as well, Ben Castle, seeing the ball boys lined up out there. Liam Knight, Norman Wise, Callum Headley, and also Jason Tuhek in. Good to see the boy ball, ball boys getting involved. Oh, local club boys. They get their opportunity to sit on a big final. And there's one of them taking the match ball out. What a moment for them to have a final at home in the Hawke Cup. Hey, they will remember that for a long time, KT. Oh, most definitely, Willie. What a great occasion and ready to kick off. And well, it's all about just calming those emotions after that beautiful anthem, you know. So looking forward to this one. I'm sure it's going to be physical. King Country in the maroon. Go. North Otago in the yellow and Ready. maroon. So North Otago to the left of your screen as you see it. We're underway. With Wellbore getting it nice and high from the restart. A little bit of miscommunication there between two of the players. And Kelly says, I'll take it and go forward. And that's the 22 you can see for North Otago. They now just use the forwards one off. Good, strong defence from the host, King Country. Good line speed getting up there very quickly. Now Fahu gets it out to Limuloa. He gets his big frame involved and they've gone a good three metres. Now they look to come back. All the backs have run out to the right, but they've now given it to the prop. And Murphy wasn't really expecting it. And now Nafu gets it out to Palmer. Palmer out to Masoi. Nimi Masoi, his first touch. They've gone backwards. Have North Otago. Four phases. They're back inside their own 22. They haven't made any ground at all. And that's great defensive work from King Country. Well, fantastic start for King Country defensively. North Otago looking to play the ball out. And take these guys on straight away, take King Country on. But last week it was defence that won the game for King Country and they've started well. So a precious scrum for North Otago to exit. North Otago here, Willie, loading this left-hand side. So a lot of space for this right-hand blind if they do get a solid platform. But you're right, defence premium. Getting right into the field. Good start for the home side. They want to try and get... Hala Lever involved eight tries this Five. season, made his debut for North Otago in 2015. Let's see Six. if they can scrummage. That's first things first. Good feed. Now, now they look to come to this right-hand side. They move it. Now, Ufu 
has the ball on the inside, comes across and makes a good tackle as a tipping, so nine on nine. North Otago yet to get outside their own half. A little bit of ball play in between the front row as Marfi gets it out. And now here goes Via Matahau. Finally, King Country get their hands on the ball, but they've lost it forward, unfortunately. Well, the intent of North Otago, they're not too keen to kick the ball at all. Yeah, they're keeping the ball in hand, looking to take on King Country from the get-go. A nice break away from that scrum. Just some messy communication. The ball went to deck. Thought that no Fahu KT could have actually put the, the hammer down there, the halfback. He got put into a good bit of real estate and really should have done better. He had some ball players there. Willie was winging on the right hand side and there was no one in front of him. He sort of went in 50 50. Lambie already, you can see, he's very quick off the base of that scrum. So the flankers for King Country had to be more aware. Straight down both sides, uh, on the side. See, uh, Salah Halaleva <laughs> just parked inside. Ben Palmer, number 10. You see their back line out Crash. there. Love to see him get ball in hand with a bit of space. You know, say the three tries against Bullock in round six and then three in last week's semi final. He is a quality player, young Salah Halaleva. A good first scrum from North Otago. But a good solid Fine. front row. Sit. Oh. Oh. Darling, Sturgis and Murphy. As they get it out now, Via Matahau gets it out. Now the loop around from Palmer. Found that there wasn't any space there and comes back to where the boards are. Big hit comes in from Wise. Anthony Wise makes the hit. Edwards gets the ball. Now they're inside the 22 King Country. Quick ball. They've got the front foot. And they've got some confidence. Have the maroon side. The one off one off pass gets it out to Wilbour. He goes three short. Use it. King Country, they've got to use it. Tipping. Ask the forwards to come in. And Ray Edwards, who got it started, picks it up and rumbles forward. Good support from King Country. Use it. Wise is there. They get it out to Mansfield. Stay last speed. He gets closed down very quickly. Tipping has it. Now they've got the back line out here. Wilbour the wild pass out to Humela. Beats the first and then blocks to offload it. Finally fight. pops it out to Mari Ikuda. Pick and go again. Here's the big number eight, Sherson. Rob Sherson made his debut in 2010. Recycled ball. He met her again, looking to get involved, the fullback. At first receiver. First real opportunity for the hosts and Ray Edwards. That's about a third carry. In this sequence of play, they go again. Here is Perawiti. Hits and spins. Good tackle coming in from Via Matahau. He's tipping. Looks out wide. Here comes the big number eight in Sherson. Rob Sherson. 33 caps is an advantage here. First penalty of the game goes for the home side. Good patient build up. Well, the game has just come to life on the home side. They got the turnover after a big tackle. They get the roll on and started pouring into the rucks, getting. Maintaining the ball and look at that. That's a good signal looking for their line out. They've had a good functioning line out this season of King Country And that man there on the shot getting his hands on the ball. Here's a big hit. There's the turnover and then they just came to life didn't they? Big carry from Ray Edwards and a good clean out good recycle now pressure on line out time. Yeah, let's see if they can find their target Sean Wondon Made his debut this year for them. Can he find his target? Glorious conditions. No problems here. They've gone to the middle of the lineup. It's tapped back and then they take it in. So no problem. Gold gets told to leave it alone. And now the forwards get interested and want to rumble it forward. Picked up is King Country Hooker. They've got to use it. Oh, one off. The ruck. North Otago. Very strong around the close quarters as they just pick and go to the King Country forwards. Tipping. Looks interested. He wants the ball. He gets it. Now they get it out to Wilbur. There is an advantage here for the King Country. They pick and go again, just a metre short. King Country looking to score the first points of the match. A pick and pop. There is some players out to the right. If they can get some quick ball and tipping knows that, that's why they get it there. Wilbur, the big wide pass out to the wing where Latuba gets the offload. First try to King Country. James Himera.
who made his debut in 2009. Latuva did the setup. That's brilliant. What a start for the home team. King Country Rams, they're over in the corner. And that man, James Himara, on the end of the chain to finish it, but it was fantastic build up from the forwards. Off a good line out, they've taken the ball in. You see it here. The throw was on point. There was some defensive work from North Otago. They managed to keep the ball uh, patient in the build up. Zane tipping. And then the wide ball at the end there. Then on the inside, Ratuva. Oh, when you're taking two defenders like that, Kartanana makes it easy, doesn't it? Oh, most definitely. But that nice pass, I think it was from the first uh, five to Hata. Will bought, missed out two players, hit a sell at Ratuva. It's dancing feet well, as you said. Ben went through two defenders, a nice little offload, and after some sustained attack, perfect start for the home team. 90 points for the season. Zane Tipping looking to try and make it 92. Good kicking conditions. And that was so close. I thought they were going to raise the flags. 5 0, the hosts ahead. And North Otago haven't ventured into the King Country half in the opening nine minutes of the game. Now the restart from Tama. Holds up, coming up and competing, doing really well was Dunster, the captain. Gets his big frame and hands on the ball, tipping with the up and under. The chase is good. Taking it beautifully though was Pemmont. Oscar Pemmont in at fullback. Seven caps, he scored three tries as well. Here's the North Otago fullback. They pick and go. Stir just gets his hands on the ball. No foul. Uh, big pass, and there's some space here as well. Now they go through Halaleva. Halaleva, eight tries for the season. The pop pass, and then the no-look pass into Palmer. Did well to the first five to hold on to it. Now Masoi gets there. Masoi with, looks out to the left, and there's big forwards. And Limuloa. The grubber kicks through, the referee says it wasn't kicked, it was lost forward. Good breakout from North Otago, but King Country answered with good defence. Yeah, good scramble defence, but what about the run from Salah Halaleva? Gets the big long wide ball, we'll see it here, Palmer. There it is. And through, he's looking for his support, it comes, his dummies on the inside. And the no look. And a big pass here from Marcel, and this is where it broke down. A good scramble defence from King Country. Well, tell you, Ben, some great work by the captain for King Country. Aaron Dunson did great from the kickoff, and then on the second occasion, with his defence, been outstanding. Fine. 86 caps for the veteran who made his debut Six. for King Country. Way back in 2003. He's a terrific captain as the number four for King Country. Beaten finalists in Division 3 in 2003. In the Lahore Cup in 2006, they were also beaten finalists. And so they haven't they've come to the big dance on a couple of occasions. They just haven't got anything to show for it. Crouch. Fine. Sit. Tipping in his second season for King Country, made his debut in 2013, and now they get it out and they just ask it to rumble forward. Then Perawiti, the big second five, tipping goes back inside to his own 22, can't kick it out on the full. And they get it down to where P.E. is Sale P.E. and he's a big unit for a wing up, and he takes some stopping as well. Now, no foul. And he gets in there and the forwards want to get involved. Here's Hala Lever looking for some work in close in the dark channels, as they call it. Over there. Be careful. Hot. Yeah, but Not be too careful. sure if he wants to go there a few more times where the big forwards are standing and waiting. Well, he's giving his nose a rub too, well, so they just any chance you can to put a shot on a player of that calibre too. But these two wingers for North Otago, two very cool, different guys. players. Hala Lever, very quick on his beat, very skillful. But as you said, Salih P. How big is that boy? I thought he's at number eight. We can play flanker, P. He's either on the wing or he's at number eight. It would be pretty daunting, him running down at UKT. I'll leave it for my centre. Ben, don't worry about that. And I wouldn't do this either. Go in the middle of the, or the teeth of the full pack of King Country. That's exactly one, what they want to do. 
finals football play on, nothing wrong with it. Yeah, Maria Kuda from the King Country, Tewaiti. Maria Kuda, the centre. So the penalty, and now Ben Palmer looks to try and close the deficit. 133 Heartland Championship points, 75 this year. Stares at the ball, stares at the post, has made a good contact, but hits the crossbar. And in soccer, that would be a goal. And in Aussie rules, you'd get a point. Well, unfortunately, we're playing rugby, Willie, so gets nothing. <laughs> Didn't look too good, neither does that. That's not a great restart along the ground. Darling gets it. Big hit again from King Country. They'll get the scrum. And scrum here. This is great defense from the hosts. And now the assistant referee wants to say something. We'll listen in. Who wants to get him right? Yeah. I don't have to Fix him up. Well, it's a good start to this game. Both teams, plenty of intent. I see the captain there, Ralph Darling, put it, even putting the ball to the boot, the big prop from the Heartland 15, just been named. That Heartland 15, they will play the Australian Barbarians in November. They've got a game against New Zealand Marist as well, haven't they? There's three matches that they've got, but have a look at the kickoff here, and Ralph Darling, he gets it, uses his eh, not good kicking skills from the loose head prop. Mind you, when you're the captain, you can do what you like. Well, the last three kicks from both sides have been pretty average, but Crutch. North Otago are in a great position here. They need to put some pressure on the scrum. Fine. Sit. Thirteen minutes gone in the match. King Country lead 5-0, and now they look to try and run it from just outside their 22. Para Perawiti is the man that they use. That's a high pass. And World Ball had to reach high before he brought it down and then put the boot to it. Parent has it. The fullback for North Otago tries to get on the outside of Wilbork, can't do so. Midfield set, they bring it out here, Sturgis. Good run from the hooker from North Otago, wasn't held and went again. And they go the same way, this is Masoi. Masoi, big hit coming in from Perawiti, 12 on 12. Good shot. Turnover. Good turnover as well. Perawiti lined him up and he made no mistake, used his shoulder, that's tremendous work. Oh, brilliant work from the midfielder, Joe Pitawiti. Here's the defensive leader of King Country. He's very key on attack. But speaking to Paul Miller, former coach of the side before the game, he said, look for this number 12, Joe Pitawiti. That's it. The flag is up and is well and truly outside the field of play when he batted it back in. But you were saying that uh, they've got big reps on? Big reps on Joe Pitawiti in defence. Key for their key for their line well speed. Done, Good get, fellas. Well done. Nine, four, one, three, yeah. Line out throw again. They look to go down the back on this occasion. It's taken down, tipping. They get it out to Perawiti again. Not only on defence, been used on attack as well. Quickly recycled. Good ball here, Wise. He's a good player, Anthony Wise. Cuts the ball inside the 22, and now they've got front foot ball of King Country. Beautiful hands. for a look on this one. This could be Mr. Barman get me a double. James Hameda could be a second try of the match. Well, we'll take a good look at this, but I think he's close. Carlton you may have a better view down that sideline, but man, what a great play from King Country. Anthony Wise, just that step. There he is, James Hamada. Just checking. Can you hear me, Get a good look at it there. Okay, can you just tell me out. It's a try, try or no try? Thank you very much. Well, King Country, they are voting with their feet as well. They're back at halfway. There's a big crowd around where we are broadcasting, and they're all yelling at me, asking, because there's no screen here, obviously. And you can see there just determination. What a class player he is. Lovely soft hands from a number of forwards, and he made up is reaching out here he's got control of the ball that's over the line no question try time ralph if it's no try we're just going back for a, a penalty for 13 offside yeah. 
There he is reaching out. King Country are back at the halfway. They are confident that James Hamada has scored. Mr. TMO, let's get on with it. That's Chai. That is Chai every single day of the week. Come on. Chai on it. James Amata gets a brace here. Now oh, we go back to Joe Pitawiti. He was the one that carried off the line out. And then Anthony Wise, the blindside flanker for King Country. Lovely little step and broke through. And then on the end of the chain, James Hamada. A well taken try in King Country. Well, they've raced out. It was just a great sequence play, wasn't it? BC, good line out take. I think it was number four. Then it's two up. And then they roll around the corner and then shift the ball quickly. Good clean ball too. And it's very tough to stop defensively when you're going backwards and... Well, using skills like that with the hands outstanding. And there's some lovely touches from some of the guys in small numbers. They got it into the hands of Himada. Tipping looks to try and make it 92 for 2015. He's done it! Oh, tremendous start from the hosts. King Country. They're sick of being the bridesmaids. Perhaps this is the time they get married. <laughs> Here's Wise, a blindside flanker. Look at the lovely footwork and the determination to get them on the front foot. And here's the end of the chain. Just the lovely hands. Look at that. Lovely from Rob Shearson. The restart and lost forward there. That player looked like an offside. And it was. Lucky the Scots aren't here because that was a very similar situation there. Before. Wow. 12 0. And North Otago want to try and now get the ball inside the 22. This has been a great performance from King Country in the opening quarter of the match. They've dominated territory and possession. 70% territory, 54% possession, but they're just playing the right tactics. They go down the back with Via Matahau, and now the offload here to Tahiti. He's held up. King Country look interested, but he fights his way to the ground. And now Sturgis rumbles forward again, gets driven backwards. Use it! No foul. He's trying to direct the traffic and telling the forwards to come around to the open side. Three phases. They pick and go again. Mapusanga on this occasion. Here goes Limulo. He's lost the ball. It's been stripped, actually. And Wilbor comes racing around. King Country will look to just clear it here. Himbara, that's a great kick. And they're racing up as well. Ball bouncing around. Parent has the ball and he gets Church at the same time. Now he beats the first. Big tackle comes in from Ratuba. Good chase from the two wingers from King Country. North Otago under pressure. They fire the ball out. And there is P. Left winger. They get it again and now the hand to the hands of Via Matahau. He offloads and now King Country try and rip the ball again. They've done it successfully, but too here, high. Please. I think it was Rob Shearson, the number eight. Got a tad yeah. high. Well, they're just keen on defence. They want to get stuck in and they're showing how good they are when they don't have the ball. Right We've are. seen how good they are with the ball. They scored two brilliant tries, but when they don't have the ball, they're hungry. They look really organised, the King Country. You've got to say, KT, that when you're playing at home, you obviously want to put on a show, and that's what King Country is certainly doing. Yeah, well, see, defensive structures, BC spoken about, I think that's where a lot of the attack has come from, is the turnovers on defence. And you can see Tihata Wilbor involved in there, just getting a little bit too high. Sturgis again with a good, accurate throw. They come along the line. Palmer gets it out to the midfield where Morris... Steps off the right and comes back, and now they bring payment in from fullback position. Lovely hands there from Sturgis. May have been a tad forward. Marginal. No far who gets it again. That comes along the ground, and Murphy picks it up. Puts his 120k frame into the wheel. The big pass out to Hullaleva. Good tackle from Church. Had to be made, and now they look for the counter rack to King Country. Great turnover. There's some space down the blind side here. And that's great play from Sean Wanden to go back in field. Now the kick from Perawiti. He'll chase his own kick. It bounces there. Now Fahu is back. 
Looks one way and buys a little bit of time and then gives it to Mapu Sanga. The blind side flanker got back, but look how many maroon jerseys and there should be a turnover here to King Country. They've lost it forward, but look at the chase from the home side. Sam Mason, he was the one who made the big tackle, but you're right, Willie, there's a big line there. They're all chasing the kick. They're all keen to get on the front foot. Sam Mason, 63 matches, the open side flanker. Here is the turnover. You can see it is Dwighty Marakura over the ball. Referee says turnover is good. And there's the tackle there, the number seven up there leading the charge, Sam Mason. Brilliant work, King Country. There's just too many numbers in and around the ball, wasn't it? BC, King Country, three on their tackle on. Hala Leva, as you'd expect, because he's such a danger man, got the turnover and they put it, turned the North Otago team around straight away. One of the most difficult positions on the field to defend against if it's a solid scrum, in particular the loose forwards. I don't know why they wouldn't go right side and give Ratuba a chance to go one on one with P. And that's exactly where they were looking to go, and the referee says, we'll go again. Both guys under pressure going down. Right, really I need dangerous. To up. 8, 9, 14 on that blind side. Let's go again. They need to get the scrum right. Yep. Sherson tipping, and yeah, then well, on to Ratu Rat. You'd be licking your lips if you're on the right wing, KT. Oh, most definitely, Willie. Really, all you want is the ball straight away. He's already shown once to set up one try out to, but he's got some good feet and he's against a bigger man. So I'm sure he'll use that stutter step and then pick a side, whether it be inside or out. But you want the ball nice and early. Scrum first. They know the threat, so they send players out across there and now tipping comes running. Ratu is there, gets the ball, gets the defender at the same time. So manages to fight his way to the ground, holds on to the ball. King Country through Mason. Takes the ball one, one off Hold here. pass here, and now the forwards are just going to rumble. Use it. It. They've got to use it, and they pick. And they come close again. Well drilled side, uh, King Country. And you know, has done a magnificent job with these forwards, and they just seem to be hunting as one as tipping gets it out to Wilbour, runs across the field, gives it to Perawiti. No one. Ball is there. They pick and go again oh. to King Country. They've got to roll away from there. But it's not rolling. Not rolling away quick enough. Tipping gets it. He knows that they've got an advantage. And Perawiti gets to his feet and goes again. The second 5-8 looking for some work in close. No real advantage. They'll come back. Number two. Good intelligent play. It was patient. It was good accuracy. And they'll get the reward of the penalty. Well, that penalty there is just pressure. It's constant pressure. Holding the ball. Recycling the ball. Good clean out. And Sam Sturgis, they're just not rolling away fast Shots enough. And that is King Country's threat. They are well drilled. We've seen how good their defence is. And now they're attacking. There is a shot, another good carry. It does so. And there is Sam Sturgis there. And the blue head gap, just not getting away. Well, King Country is just winning the contact, aren't they, at the moment? Both in defence and attack, they're getting over the ball. They're getting numbers to the ball in both instances. And at the moment, well, North Otago are having to commit these penalties just to slow that ball down. North Otago have been to the finals every single year. This is their 16th consecutive final. Someone forgot to tell King Country. And they don't care. And they're here and they mean business. Started very well in the opening 25 minutes. And Zane Tipping looking to try and extend that lead to 15 points. Good goal kicker There's Tipping. Gets the thumbs up and the applause from the crowd. 15 nil. He's on 95 points for the season. Oh, fantastic work, Zane Tipping. Just keeping that scoreboard ticking over. In King Country, this is a fantastic start. Sir Brian Lahore watching on. They are playing for the Lahore Cup, these two sides. A high restart from Palmer. Coming forward is Ratuvar. He's lost it inside North Otago with possession. Sturgis. Gets it out to Palmer. He throws one out the back door as well. So now they need to find someone to set a target and go forward. And that's Morris. Nafahu out to Palmer. Some running ball. Brings payment up. Gets hit from tipping. And then he pops and runs into the shoulder of Mason. Now via Matau. Again, the one-off. And look at the gang tackling coming in from King Country. That's the big difference. Mason's got it. Edwards is there as well. It's a more that'll try and hold him up. 
That ball won't come out. This should be a King Country scrum. On the applause from the crowd. KT, this defence, they have that brilliant umbrella defence, don't they? The backs, they're coming up flat. They're coming up hard on the outsides, preventing North Otago getting wide. Exactly right, BC. Just that little bit of indecision here as the kickoff comes forward off the shoulders of Ratuva. That's what gave North Otago the opportunity. But look at the numbers. There's one, two, three on one player. He's not sure what to do. He hits it up. Look at them. Relentless. Good work there from the flanker, Sam Mason. Yeah, they swarmed in, didn't they? Mason was there, Sherson. And then the rest of the cavalry arrived. Bye. Sit. Some real confidence from King Country having one last week playing away. Wilbur gets it out wide. Lovely wide pass out to Hamada. Hamada now tries to find some space for Church. Church down the outside. He's passed into Halaleva, who did very well to stay in between the two players. Hamada was there. Got him, got him the ball. And now they've got him down. And it's been ripped clear by Scherz, and He's done well. Has the big number eight. Hamada involved again. That's the 22 you can see. And there is an advantage here for King Country. They get it wide. Out to where Edwards is standing. Gets the help from Wise. Anthony Wise on his shoulder. Tipping out to Wilbour. They loop around and now Tipping gets inside the 22. Ball is there, picked by Maria Kuda. Out to Church. They had numbers out to the left, but he held on to the ball. Now they're queuing up. Well, that's hot potato stuff with the ball. You'd understand that if you've got kids and you know the wiggles. Yeah, pick and go again out to Wanden. There's still an advantage here. Mason just slows it down. Look at the amount of maroon jerseys that are there. And the support from King Country. Sherson, he was the man that ripped it clear at the start. He pushes his man forward and then gets in and clears it. He's fine. Seven yellow and They win the penalty. Smart play from the hosts, and it's gutsy and relentless. On oh, the referee. Just wait, wait. Wanting to have a chat, North no, Otago. It's getting during the play. So it's seven yellow was offside. So it's now three offside. There it is. Okay, and two. They right are infringing. And it is all down to King Country's constant very work on attack. A brilliant scrum, which did send. This is where we'll get the penalty now. Time on. Well, they've opted for the line out. Well, why wouldn't you when you're so good with ball in hand at the moment, King Country? Total control in the first 29 minutes of this game. Still a long way to go. This King Country side playing to a very simple pattern and they're doing the basics extremely well. North Otago struggling to get out of their own half. And they get up and compete. Now Fahu gets it and they get it out into the midfield where Halaleva has it. He gets some space as well. Halaleva gets rid of one. Now the offload. Big tackle comes in from Himata of the offload to Morris. Out along the chain to Pament. Oscar Pament scored three tries this year. North Otago dodge a bullet by competing at the lineout. And they've gone 50 metres. Best passage of play from the visitors in the opening 30 minutes. The big heavy artillery of Murphy cuts the ball forward. They look and they pop it up again. Great defensive work again. It's Mason. How many tackles has the open side flanker made in the opening 30 minutes as they move it along the chain? P.E. And on the wing, Ofahu, good defensive hit. The outside in, where the attacker didn't see it. Now they get it along the chain. Here is Taiti. Lovely offload. They get it out to Halalefa, who started it, asking the lot to come on the inside. Cut. Brilliant tackle. Had to be made by Sean Wondon. Church is there. North Otago just slow it down. Ofahu throws it across. That was knocked backwards. In fact, that could be a penalty as well. It should be. If the referee's going to be consistent, here is Darling. Ralph Darling. He gets his hands on the ball. The pop pass up to Morris. Vanish, no arms. North Otago again through P. Big and strong is the left winger. And he's lost it cold, though. And then they'll come back for the penalty. First real opportunity for North Otago. And showing just how dangerous they are as an aside. Oh, they got the big roll on, didn't they? North Otago. They've realised that they really need to step up. They're going to take on this King Country side, and they have done that. The referee here. I've really seen it. Having a chat with his assistant. There's a call of no arms. 
penalty only. Penalty only. 13, no arms. We've got rolling here, North Otago. Still is so impressive as King, King Country's Shots. scramble on defence. They are managing to get in behind and managing to make their tackles the ones that count. Aaron. Oh, Kartanana. Here's the break of the speedster. Yeah, Hala Lever. We always knew he was going to be an integral part. Look at these offloads, and that's the thing that really did test this King Country defence. They were able to get the ball. They were sticking, firstly, for this North Otago team, and now they desperately need some points. They need to try and close the deficit before the break. 15-0. The host lead, and here is Ben Palmer with his second attempt. 75 points in 2015. 133 to his name, so... He certainly has the caliber and he has the radar on as well. North Otago get their first points of the final. King Country lead 15 3. The reason for that penalty, you'll see it there. <laughs> Two big men. Midfielder on prop, no contest. The restart. Down to where Nofahu has it, gets it back to the number eight and Fia Matahau. They clear it. That's a good play from North Otago after scoring points to just get the ball and get it back into the half of King Country where Sherson stands, gets it into Himata, into the midfield. He gets it out to Tipping. Ratuvar is there, but Tipping gets hit in a big tackle coming in from Aliki Morris. That was a beauty. That's a bone rattler. Sherson picks and goes again. That's the halfway mark. Mason offloads it to Himata. Tries to get on the outside. Good footwork from the man that scored two tries for King Country. Good awareness to keep the ball in play. But now it looked like they came through, not the gate. Well, good defensive work at the breakdown, North Otago. The referee's eyes, they were coming in legally through the gate. It's a wide gate. <laughs> North Otago down the back via Matahau. Where's the ball? Offside. Palmer goes running across and then he gives a little pop pass here. They try and hold him up. Good play from Sherston and Wise. Anthony Wise doing very well getting in there. But the referee says no advantage from the line outs. Offside, leaving early. Seven. It's good loose forward trio for King Country. Mason Wise and Seven Sherson. They're yeah, hard working. Led by that man there, Sam Mason. And Anthony Wise equally. Big number six. Big carrying blindside and Rob Sherson. Yep. They all get into the hard work, do they, that loose forward trio. You've got to admire the resilience of this North Otago team, though, boys. Feel the momentum really has gone onto their side. They've got a couple of back to back penalties now. They have to make full toll of it just before the half. You just feel they need to trial something just to lift them a little bit. They're threatened of a couple of occasions in there. You just see the flanker leaving too early, Sam Mason. Yeah, outside the 15 metres meant that he couldn't advance. They get up and they win the line out to North Otago. Palmer has PE on the inside. The loop around from the halfback and he steps through. Does now five. He's got players on the right hand side. Looks on the inside. Here's Marsawi. Marsawi's in. North Otago have always threatened and just showing why they are so dangerous. Given half a chance and Lemmy Marsawi scores his 11th try. Well, Anuki Nafahu the halfback he broke through off a very good set piece a well-organized line out it was Limaloa here he is up there good delivery off the top and here's Palmer and then a back inside and the gap opened up and just put the hammer down to Nafahu and then a lovely inside ball Lemmy Masoe Heartland 15 it was just that loop, wasn't it? That caused some confusion in the defence, and he set it up nicely, had numbers on the right-hand side, decides to go in the inside to his inside centre. Lemmy Marceau, he's been good in defence on this one. Now he gets it on attack. And his debut in 2007 did Marceau. And all of a sudden, North Otago are back in this game just within a matter of minutes. And Palmer kicking it around 50% in this match, one from two. 
Comes in and he strikes it just inside the right hand post. All of a sudden, 15 0 becomes 15 10. That's a good response, North Otago. They are a quality outfit. They're very used to finals footy. We have mentioned their long stint in the business end of the season. And they're just getting their roll on, but they are up against a very passionate home team, King Country. So they'll have to keep going. World Ball with a lovely high restart coming forward as the halfback in the foul is met by Mason as he gets the ball and then the defender at the same time that's the 22 they get it back to Palmer and he says let's get out of here and a big high kick no one's really claiming it except the North Otago fullback Ratuva has to then bring Pamman down ball is available Palmer gets in and gets it out momentum certainly with the visitors at the moment Sturgis carries it forward some of the concrete mixes standing out in the midfield. Taiti does a little pirouette, and then they go forward. Palmer again, the dummy. The tackle by Mason. He pops the ball off the ground. Now Fahu driven backwards. No, and they look to now counter up. King Country just can't get their hands on the ball. No. Halaleva picks and goes. There's some space there. They're starting to fall off the tackles now. The offloads starting to work as well for North Otago. Morris just goes forward. The kick was good, it was taken by Pamant, and then all of a sudden, North Otago through six phases, just holding on to the ball and getting into the opposition half. No look pass into the captain, Ralph Darling. Now they come back to the left hand side where Sturgis is standing, gets it in a standing start. PE is there. Nafahu gets it in and gets it to Lima Law. A lot of defensive work from the King Country side as Palmer gets it. Got some players out here. Ball's gone forward and now it's gone forward. Lovely pick up from Wellborn. Ball out the back. It has been knocked back by one of the defenders. And great opportunity for King Country there. Good defensive work. Yeah, good defensive work at that time. But one thing that has just let King Country down in the last few minutes is their tackling. There's some missed tackles there. They have been sitting at around four missed tackles, but in the last five minutes, eight more have crept into their game. We'll see it here. Their line speed is coming up. Now they're starting to get an accuracy on the pass. And there is Church. And if this had gone to hand with a bit more space. Keep that height. Made that look easy, didn't he? Class player is Tehata Wilbour. Scoop the ball up on the run. Not an easy thing to do. Good defensive work from the try scorer for North Otago as well, Masoi, to get back. Stay on. King Country now. Will Bohr. Across they go. Peter Witty. Now the loop from Will Bohr again. They get it out to Himara. 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 Two on one. Gets it out to Ratu. Ratu is up to score the third. Ninth try. This season made his debut this year. And Ilicia Ratubar is a great finisher. I put it down to Himara, who ran in a beautiful line and put the winger in for the third try. Well, Katanani, you would have scored plenty in that situation on the end of a beautiful passing work from the King Country side, but it is the scrum. It's stable. Look at Zane tipping there. Lovely ball. Gets the back line running. And Carlton Arnold, here we are. When you're on the wing here, you just follow up with the fullback, don't you? And you take the ball and you go. Oh, most definitely. They manipulated the defence well, didn't they? King Country. All it was is a one round two behind three. You can see that's what makes the defence stop. And a player running at full pace against a player who has to start and go again. Well, it's always got to be mismatched. They get on the outside and not too far. The smile was going 20 metres out. Well done. A big Fijian smile. You could see it from Suva. And that's great reward. It's what they needed to do. They needed to get back into the game in that way, and that's just what they've done. 95 points this year. We'll keep mentioning it because if he reaches 100, he'll become the fourth King Country player to have reached a century in a calendar year. And that's looking a little short. Oh, what a time to score for King Country. A couple of minutes before the end of the first half, they have been under pressure. North Otago starting to get a roll on. And King Country, a way to respond like that. A lovely set-piece try. Yes. That Heartland 15 team that you've been talking about, Ben Castles, yeah, they will play in Masterton, Levin and Whanganui. 
I guess New Zealand Marist and the Australian Barbars, a number of those players involved in this game here. He's tipping, looks down the blind side and gets it out to Ratuva. PE comes up, can't hold him. Gets rid of the first, second, and the third. Does the flying Fiji and out on the right wing. Now it's Anthony Wise. He's had a good first half as the blind side flanker for King Country. Worked well with Mason. Tipping goes to this guy's Pummet takes it easily and then looks to try and find some space down that left hand flank great break here damn he's got players on the inside and outside mapusanga was well, the loose forward tally was on the inside too he ran fit man's alley did the prop and captain now they get it along the line lovely bit of footwork there from kelly john kelly now they bring in the try scoring machine hello lever seven short king country just needs to hold on for one minute before the break Another break here from Aliki Morris. Here's Naufo. They've got an advantage of a scrum, so a scrum advantage for North Otago. Nothing comes from this. Tahiti's there. Quick pop passes, and now that's gone along the line again. Out to Darling. Now P.E. P.E. tries to get on the outside. Big and strong. Big hit by Ratuva that had to be made. That was a beauty. Back here, lost four. He, he knew the real threat of Oscar Pamant and he came in off his wing and made a tackle that had to be made. Well, and Zane Tipping involved in some of that defence there. He's not afraid to get stuck in and make some big tackles. Made a couple of big ones. There he is, Zane. A couple of big tackles on Sully Pee. And the big winger for North Otago as the hooter sounds. There will be time for that scrum. Good old-fashioned scoreboard. Well, Willie, there's a guy on your right-hand side of your wing, num jersey number 14. He scored a mountain of tries. He's only five metres away from the try line. If you get a solid platform, just give it to him. Well, Church is standing there. And they know what a threat he is. They've sent a couple of defenders across. It's a match. Masala Halaleva. Let's see if they can do the first thing first. And that's exactly what they do. Running ball. No, Faro didn't give him the ball. I opted to go for himself, and the halfback scored. Well, that's because he had Halaleva out to the right. The defenders took the dummy, and Inoki Nofo made his debut here. It's only his third game. Well, that's his first try, and it's one he won't forget. Well, what a time to score for North Otago in response. And as you mentioned, Salah Halaleva, he is the reason for that try. He's the one dragging the defenders across. He was the main threat. I mean, they're all looking out for there. They're not sure where Inoki Nafahu, and as a good nine does, sneaks through. Look at his pace from the... Back of the scrum, it is good ball from Ver Matahau. And then over he goes. Great try. Well, he's been good this first half for me, BC. In no Nofahu. And can they put the exclamation mark on this first half? Just what every coach wants is points just before the break in North Otago have come up with trumps this to reduce the deficit to three palmer makes no mistake the flags are raised three tries to two and the hosts lead at the break by 20 points to 17. himata picked up a double ratuva the try scorers for king country and masari and nofahu for the visitors and aliki morris is there with kaltanana well, a lick of their last 10 minutes, you needed a couple of tries and you got them. Yeah, no, we worked hard and got a bit of momentum, so it's handy getting that going into the second half. Hopefully we can carry it on and get a roll on. The first 30 minutes, they put pressure on you defensively, but um, that uh, last 10 minutes, you made a couple of offloads and they started to stick. Yeah, well, we decided to hold on to it, but the offload seems to be there. They're chopping low, so getting the uh, upper body free and getting the ball flying, which is good. Good luck for the second half, eh? Thanks very much. Good luck to hear from one of the players. That's North Otago centre, Aleki Morris. Half time here at Rugby Park and King Country leading North Otago by 20 points to 17. Back to Rugby Park in Tikawiti, Tanga Onga, Fakaro. Tikawiti, the gathering of ideas and plenty of ideas 
and have been in the first 40 minutes as we see the try scorers. Yamada picked up two, Ratuva got one, Masori and Nafahu for North Otago. And it was the hosts who really put the foot on the accelerator, Ben Castle, right from the get go, in particular their fullback. Well, here's the end of the chain. When King Country, they got the ball wide, they started with a hiss and a right. Ratuva back on the inside for Himara. They were just too good there. They had kept the ball, they recycled well, and that big man, lovely step and good backing up. And the second was equally as good. Have a look at the quick hands here, in particular there from the hooker, Wanda, up to Sherson, and then they get it out to the try scorer again, James Himara, who wasn't going to be tonight. And it was all King Country in that opening sequence. He did get the ball, enough of the ball on the chalk, but then it was North Otago's turn to get involved. And then look at Nafahu, look at him on the wrap around there with Palmer, and then he saw the gap and away he went. He went through the hole, and it was Lemet Masoi on the inside following up, and a very good time to score for North Otago. Well, it took them 30 minutes to finally get into the game, the visitors, and it was one of the smaller players on the field in Nafahu that did the outbreak, or did the break rather, and then Masoi, and for his ninth try, well, 11th try in his career, and then they moved it along the chain. They came back to King Country, out to Himata. Had his winger on the outside. Rantuva knew about 50 metres out he was going to score. The smile was there, and it brought the crowd to their feet. You know, a lovely set-piece try, a lot of deception in the midfield, and then lovely passing, ball out in front. And this is just a draw and pass, and Rantuva, too fast, big smile, good time to score, King Country. And then the coach killer right on. The stroke of half time, a scrum, strong set in the foe. Ducks under the tackle of Wise. He hasn't made missed too many tackles, Anthony Wise. Uh, so Brian Lahore looks on. It's all about that, the cup. And Ben Castle, stats, what can we read into these? Oh, we look at these stats down there. Everything relatively even, but if we stroll down there, offloads and the missed tackles, they are the key ones. The missed tackles are high due to the offloading game that North Otago do play. So 17, it's too high. Half time here at Rugby Park. The hosts, King Country Rams, are leading North Otago by 20 to 17. More action right after this. Final is in Tikawiti. Beautiful setting here as the hosts scored three tries in the first 40 minutes. Three tries to two. Their coach is Daniel Alofa. He's downstairs with Carl Tanana. Well, coach, that first 30 minutes of their first half, you would have been pretty happy. You yeah, know, pretty happy with our attack, mate, but what's leading us down at the minute is our defence. So if we can sort our defence out, we'll, we'll win with the show. So hopefully we can do the job in the next 40 minutes. One thing that really stood out to me is that everyone knew their structures they're getting really, especially defensively. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's what we want to try and do, you know. Like, 40 minutes is, is a long time, so hopefully we can get it right and come away with the win. Potentially 40 minutes before you, before uh, hopefully you get a championship. What was the last words before you left the shed? I said, if they really want it, Lahore's waiting for a team that wants it the most, and hopefully we come out and wanting it. Good luck, coach. Cheers, mate. Uh, lovely words there from Daniel Alofa. How much do they want it in the next 40 minutes? Palmer with the restart. Deep into the heart of Ray Edwards. He cuts it forward, tipping. Now they look to get it out to Sherson. He's had a good first 40 minutes is tipping now. Stop, stop. He uses that lovely right boot of his. The kick here. Down to where the number eight was waiting via Matahu. Gets it into payment. He finds some gaps. Well, found some gap, as he did in the first half as well. Nice good payment. Matahu out to Palmer, and they just get their hands on the ball. Masoi in a big tackle again from Perawiti. A pop pass up. Here's Wise. Anthony Wise pumping the legs and looking for some extra meters. The turnover here gets out to Mari Ikuda. The kick is charged down, picked up by Palmer. Not sure if the kick was the right option for King Country. They had players out to the left. Mason comes in and tries to make a nuisance of himself. Via Mata'ahu gets it out wide. Lovely wide pass from the captain out to P.E. P.E. the ball on the inside. Ball is there. Ratuva has it. Ratuva! Lovely footwork. Now he puts down the Kick 
country. What a start, second half. And out to the VAR. He's just too big and too strong. There are two turnovers in that last minute. And this man on the end of the second one to score a brilliant individual try. Powerful and fast. You will see the tackle here from Shesson. And this is where it broke down. Look at this, the in and away, the good footwork. And then fast and look in the far who coming across and then the fan just too big. Over. What about the work of Rob Sherson right there? Affects a tackle. Look at him switch it straight to support. And I think every Fijian's blessed with a step like that. Look at the determination. Too strong. And he gets a double in this final. Well, that is all about opportunities. And Elisa Ratuva. Well, Daniel Alofa. He spoke with Carl Tanana at the break. And he said that he wants to make sure that they want it, and really, that's a sign that they want business. They want the cup. Zane tipping. Just short. So those missed conversions really start to add up now. Nonetheless, they've scored four tries. Well, defence was a big one for coach Daniel Alofa and a team that wants it the most. Well, two good examples in that try there. Very good defence with turnover and then determination to get to the line. Another restart. Wise, Anthony Wise has been good, runs across the field and then he goes forward, but he's run behind one of the players. Yeah, technically, they say it's obstruction. Now, I'm not a big fan of that rule. Yeah, yeah. He stopped him making a tackle. Shot's cool. Well, they've opted for the shot. North Otago shot at goal. The points are a bit more important. We'll see it here. It's Rice who's taken the ball in the big carrier. And it's just, well, a lot on it. That's tough, isn't it? He ran across and Sturgis couldn't make a tackle. The law is the law. Yep. But not a bad option now, North Otago, just ticking that scoreboard over. Just staying in touch, aren't they? They've been a real nuisance. Haven't played much rugby, North Otago, but they only trail by eight. 75% accuracy from this man today, Ben Palmer. And this again will put them within five. Two looks at the post, two looks at the ball. Moves in. Yeah, no doubt. Knew straight away, as soon as he had hit it, he turned and started running back to halfway. 25-20. Tremendous game of rugby here at the Lahore Cup final. Well, it's a scary thing for me, Willie spoke about it. They haven't played all that much football, but probably 10 minutes in this whole game. So if it starts clicking for this North Otago team, look out. Mason goes up and competes. Seven on seven. Mason wins the battle. No, he didn't. He lost it forward. And so North Otago, Palmer, big wide pass out to P. Comes up to Ratuvar and he gets rid of the first defender, Marikura. Now they hold him up. Mason goes in, tries to steal the ball, but he's coming from the side. Not Seven's coming the side to try and hold him up. Must come from behind. Uh, not from the gate. But the ball's all up, isn't it? Can't he come in from the side there? No, there's still offside lines at the mall. Sorry, Mason has come in. There is still must come from the highmost foot, joining a ruck, joining a mall. And Mason, he's seen the ball up, but any good open side flank it will get a good look at it here. He just wants to get his hands on the ball. Here he is. He must still come in the gate. He's come straight in. He can see the ball, just wants it. Yeah, no, you're right. That shows you how many malls I went to, PC. Yeah, I was going to say, good to see that Ben Castle digested the old rugby rules this morning over breakfast. They go deep to North Otago and they bring the ball down. This is the type of play that we're used to seeing. Taiti has it in control in the boot. And now he gets it back to Nafau. Palmer with some running ball. Big hit again. Coming in from Perawiti. And he's been good on defence. The real strong man. And now 10 on 10. Good tackle from Wilbour on Palmer. They've moved the ball along the line, and now Halaleva wants to run. It's Pirawiti again putting a shot on. Out here to Muffy. Muffy is tackled by Wondon and places the ball. Five phases, they've gone across the field, and now it comes into the hands of John Kelly. Kelly got isolated for a second. Sherson looks interested, but now he just releases. And here's Limuloa. 
Again, here's Darling. Ralph Darling. Get a little bit of time to warm up the captain. Get those little pistons pumping. And it's a Limu Law again. So they're just holding on to the ball and asking questions of the King Country defence. And now they use decoy players. Palmer gets it into the hands of the break there made by Masoi. Again, the pop pass off the ground. Nafar. Nafar has it again. Nafar. He's going close. He's very close. He's picked up a brace. It's doubles all round. Oh, two tries to Himata, two to Ratuva, and now two to Nofo. Oh, he's gone over. It's perfect build up from North Otago. They were patient, one off runners, they stood the hard yards. And then this man here, Anuki Nafahu, he's only started two matches before this one. He has been their backup nine. We can see why he has been selected. He snipes around the rucks. Here's a very, very good carry from Lemmy Masoi. Gets him on the front foot. And here it is here, just, oh, that lovely right foot step. Just too much power after the step, and then away he goes for his brace. What a run by the inside centre, though. Masoi brushed off three defenders. And, and knock it. No far. what a time to score a brace of tries in the final. Picked up the all-important one just before the break, and now he scored in the second half. Eleven points thus far becomes thirteen, and more importantly, they take the lead for the first time in the match. North Otago, who have trailed for forty-seven minutes, take the lead in the forty-eighth. They're ahead by two. Get that final look at it here. Look at that step there. Just power off it. The presence of mind just to put his foot down and get over the line. That's well done. And the restart again. They've got some possession. They've got some confidence. Have the visitors, North Otago. Nafahu digs it out. Nas Sturgis to carry it forward. They go the same way. Here's the number eight. Via Matahal. Again, it's cleared still just with that blue headgear. Now Palmer wants the ball. Is it Sandbuck that was on the field that nearly got in the way? Lovely footwork as well. Again, the step here from Morris. Beat three or four players. North Otago through Palmer. Out to Kelly. John Kelly standing out wide. The big lock. They went to try and get the ball out. They complained and it's gone back with the kick through. Hala Lever was there, but Himara came forward and wait, wait, wait. the art of claiming the ball he's lost that it one's forward gone backwards. This one's lost KT, forward. King Country just can't get their hands on the ball no, North Otago just locking up position here at the moment Willie and they're getting in the right position those offloads once again are just causing confusion amongst the King Country defence and causing a whole lot of problems I thought just a little sneaky boot there kicked the ball out pretty lucky to get away with that one Some attention down in midfield. North Otago running repairs. Yeah, I know, but if you go around. Sam Sturgis, out of the Otago University Club. Up the motorway. And I think it's just a hand injury because a bit of a tension there. You see the shoulder gets a bit of a stretch. And he'll be in. Won't be in too much of a hurry to get to a scrum then, will he? Well, they're just getting their roll on now, aren't they, North Otago? Their tail's up a little bit into the lead, and they haven't, we haven't seen a lot of them. They've taken their opportunities when they're presented. And here's some heavy artillery. Carl Tanana waiting. Yeah, Mele Colinus out. Doesn't look too worried about not going on, to be honest. Always no movement, real good. Well, this is a great attacking ob opportunity here for North Otago. Everyone out to the left-hand side. Watch the right winger again. Correct. There you can see Halaleva standing Fine. in behind the first five, Ben Palmer. And then it's Marcelli and Morris in the midfield. They've come to pre engage. That's the first time today. Yeah. He's hardly touched the ball. Yeah, There's Halaleva, the eight try wander of 2015 for North Otago. Let me Marcelli though, Willie. Jersey 12 and the Lecky Morris have been strong with the setups in midfield. Bye. Sick. 
good solid scrum from North Otago Palmer with running ball they hold up and then they give it to Morris Morris puts the accelerator down tipping made the tackle referee says no problem at all and now it's Kelly with another strong run from the lock yeah they get it out so the locks working in tandem Lemu Law gets it Nafahu now to Mafi to Palmer not a good pass but a good scoop and then the offload here to the blindside flanker and Mapusanga. Palmer gets and gives it back to Murphy. He gets isolated. Fahu gets it out to Via Matahau. Inside pass. Good shot put in from Mansfield. They hit and spin. So North Otago in control of possession and territory. Darling. Oh, my darling goes. Darling! Darling! Oh, it's just a metre short. Mason has done so well to get it and steal it. The big prop thought he was over. They've still got possession. Here goes Nafu. Looks for a hat trick. Gets pulled back. Masoi has it. The pop pass out. Defense is good from King Country. They scramble again. Use it. They pick and go. That looks like it's been lost forward. And now Kimada goes in, gets the ball, but the referee says that King Country lost the forward. Sturgis, I think, was the man that lost it. Oh, brilliant defence. King Country, they're not out of jail yet. And they've certainly snuffed out a five-pointer. As a former prop, Ben, you would have been thrilled with Ralph Darling. The footwork and the pace. Oh, the footwork, and he was so close to reach out. Here it is, look at that. Off the left, bang, swerve, ball in two hands. And then one, the reach out. Oh, Sam Mason. Here's the last one, the defensive hand from King Country, just coming through and knocking that ball. And now pressure scrum. A lot of pressure here on the loose forwards for King Country. And they'll try and promote that right-hand side, North Otago, you'd imagine. Danger man on the right. Hala Lever is there. Down on the far side. We're knocking. Mofahu is always also shown if he gets clean ball from his number eight. He's very quick as well. So multiple threats on that right hand side if they want to go that way. Well, another opportunity as well at scrum time no with the loose forwards of King no Country. Move. They'll be concentrating on defence. This is where a scrum, if they really wanted to use their advantage, keep the ball at the back and keep the weight on. Eight versus five. So King Country, they've got two jobs to do. Good scrum from the visitors. And Mofahu's has scored two tries. The offload here to Halahiva. Tripped. Anthony Wise got across and did a very good tackle, and now the backs want the ball. Palmer, Marsoi gets it, steps, and then bursts forward. Needs some support from the forwards. They're a little bit laboured to get there, but they've arrived, and now they pick, and it's Limulor again. Good defence from King Country, but the visitors still have the ball. Here's Sturgis, who picks up, runs into big Rob Sherson. Pick and go again, Limulor. Doesn't make any yardage there. Kelly loses the ball forward, and King Country have done a fantastic job of defending. Let it go, Mr. Referee. No advantage, lost four. Oh, great defence, King Country. They deserve that. They rolled their sleeves up. They took everything that was thrown at them by North Otago. And the crowd certainly breathe a collective sigh of relief. Hooker's down. That is Aaron Dunster. It's his third final, and as we look at the good crowd here, and he's played in all three of them as well in 2003, 2006, and here in 2015. And this is just where the ball is lost. Well, attack will win your games, Willie, but defence wins your finals, and that's exactly, in this last five minutes, what King Country have done. They've stood up, stayed strong, they've dug in, and they needed that desperate defence. North Otago has got a huge role on and come the Meads Cup final up next. Looking forward to that. Join Ken Laban and the crew down. And Timaru South Canterbury taking on Wanganui for the Meads Cup at 4.30. And then the big one tonight, it is Canterbury v Auckland, live on Sky Sport from 7 o'clock. Of course, all of this, the entree towards the main course of tomorrow morning. The All Blacks in South Africa. Buying. Set. Still plenty of time left for King Country. They trail by two. Stay on. Led for most of this game as Sherson comes off the back. Gets rid of the first. Does big Rob Sherson. Says, get out of my way. 
carts it forward. Tevin gets it back to Will Bohr. They want to move the ball out to Himata, and he puts his boot to it. Good touch find, a good kick as well. That's a tremendous kick from the King Country fullback. Plus. Well, now the crowd find their voice. They're happy. Their team gets back on the front foot. There is James Himata. A lovely kick, but a great carry off the back of a very stable scrum, Rob Shearson, the number eight. Now their team on the front foot here. Look at all the time in the world, just struck it beautifully over the top of Pamant. And then the bounce of the ball. Yeah, my apologies earlier. My mis wrote his name then. I would put it with an E instead of an A. Of course, it's Himata. So my apologies to the Himata family for calling him Himata earlier on. What a class act he is. There's North Otago now in position of the ball through Taiti. And they rumble forward. King Country need to get involved. They've got to use it. They get it out to Masoi. How many times have we mentioned his name and carting the ball forward? Good contest between Masoi and Perawiti. As Palmer gets it, goes to the air. Himata is there. He's got plenty of time, takes it. Ratuva calls for the ball. He's got some space as well. The crowd go up as one. Ratuva gets rid of the first. Beats the second, pops it off to the captain and Dunster. Tipping wants the ball. And he gets it here as Himata again. Lovely little offload. Well born. They get it out now to Pedawiti. He's been really good for them, Pedawiti. Look to offload, pops it up. Play on, says the ref. Ball is there. Sherson got there very quickly. They look, they didn't really release it. And now they do. Out along here is Wilborn. Needs some support. That's Wilborn. Wise is there. Mason arrives. Ball is there. Tipping has it. He wants to try and score a try. To reach 100 points. They trail by two, but they pick and go here. Now just seven short. King Country. Anthony Wise. And they've got an advantage here, so they'll get the penalty. They pick and go again to King Country. Looking for try number five. On this occasion, it's Timuan Anui. Who's done very well to hold on to it there. Tipping has it. Sherson, he deserves a try. Hits and spins. It's gone backwards. Tipping is there. They'll come back for the penalty. No advantage. Well and Great well passage of play from King Country. Some lovely skills shown from the side. Oh, Pitawiti down that left hand touchline, showing his brilliance on attack. We've seen how good a defensive leader he is. And there is Sam Mason, the hard-working seven. A good decision here to take the points there is Pitawiti. And he's powerful with ball in hand. We get a look at the offside here, just not retreating in time. North Otago just starting to creep. Now in Kaltanana, the Pitawiti run. Down that left-hand side, powerful. This to put the hosts back in front. Conversion is good. King Country lead by a point. We can take that all the way back, Willie, to their defensive effort just moments earlier. Meters from their try line, they dug in, and then this is the end result. And they're going to make their first up, uh, both sides actually. On a jersey 21 for the home team, Jesse Williams. He's replacing the outside centre. Uh, to fight him, Mare Kura. And here we have the big number 17, Mele Kolene Sowers on. He is a big unit. 20 years old. No way. 20 years old. All done. Can't wait to see him when he grows up. Time on. And the restart down at the hands of Anthony Wise. This time he won't run across the field. He just goes forward, does the big blindside flank. They pack and go again, King Country. Sean Wonden in his debut season, he's had a good game. In fact, all of the King Country players hard to pick a player that hasn't stood up today. They lead by one, they get it back now. Wilbore says, let's get out of our own half. Let's play for territory. That's a great kick as well. From Tehata, Wilbore. Pamit is inside his 22. That's an awful kick. It goes straight up in the air. King Country here through the replacement. And Williams, Williams. Now they pile in, they look interested. Held up here. Five metres scrum, King Country ball. What was Oscar Payman thinking? Oh, finals rugby. It forces you to make decisions. 
And that kick, a lovely kick that time to Hata Wilbour. And the chase. Oh, just hit it right. Jesse Williams didn't, couldn't believe his luck. He's just been on the field two seconds. Nearly over the cavalry arrive. They've got their tails up now. King Country. Oh, you're right, Ben Castle. The pressure of the moment was the wrong option. There he is. He can make up for it now with making a tackle. But G's a very, very tough place to defend here. Multiple threats. Crouch. They've got a big blind side as well. Fine. That they can go. Sherson. Go. Set. Line them up. Go. Tipping out to the left wing of Church. Stay on, Seven. Stay the on. Left over. Sherson wants to go to the right side. Sherson. Sherson's over. You bet he is. No one deserves it more than that man on screen. He's been tremendous on defence. And on attack, he gets an opportunity and piles his way over for the fifth try. Wonderful scrum, King Country, stable. It gives the number eight here, Rob Sherson, an opportunity to set himself and then explode off the back of the scrum, draw in defenders and go between two of them to go over. This is all off a mistake from North Otago, a pressure situation. Here he goes off the back, determined nothing was going to stop him. Well, he's a throwback to the old days, isn't he? Just half tart, tough heart and uncompromising. He is a soldier, Rob Sherson. That's a tremendous try. Made his debut in 2010, 34 caps, one try in the final, eight in his career. And Zane Tipping is on 98 points. Make that a century. Oh, no, he hasn't. He has missed it. I just used my best line, it's gone. <laughs> well, more importantly, though, King Country, 33. North Otago 27, here it is again, the scrum. Good work up front. These are good front rowers' tries, these as well. They do take some credit. Hey, good point. And it was all about the set there, and Sir Brian Lahore looks on. Those misconversions really are starting to add up now. As Tipping gets the ball, we know what a quality player he is. But just looking, Ben, they've scored five tries to North Otago's three, and they only lead by six. Main thing is, Willie, they still lead this King Country side. And they made a couple of changes. Manuel Aloffa's on in jersey 18, and also Michael Fodden in jersey 19. Thank you. Here is that conversion. How do you... Well, I won't say how do you miss it, because he did. And they go high to Lima Law. They bring it down. North Otago now will look to try and rumble forward, get some easy metres. Mapusanga has it under control there. They've got to use it now. They flat in to King Country, the pass, the pressure as Palmer goes back. Palmer looks up and sees the maroon wall. That kick's been charged. Williams tried to get it, but Morris did a better job of scooping it and passing it forward, and then they rumble Sherson with another tackle wise around the boot laces. Palmer has it, gives it back to Sturgis. They looked a little Listen. forward. And they come back, and here comes Darling. Ralph Darling, the captain who has made the New Zealand Heartland 15 site. He's led well today. Palmer again scooped it out to Via Matahau. Good tackle coming in from Wanden. Yeah, yeah. Get it out. Here is the big replacement and the Colini Yeah, yeah. There's another replacement on in Keenan. Get it along. Here's Marsoi. We know the threat that Marsoi offers. Will Ball did well to hold on to him. Stay on. They run across and then the offload. Here comes Darling. Ralph Darling. Gets the ball to the ground. Here is Sturgis. Look at the line speed from King Country. Even in the 63rd minute, they're racing up. Palmer has it again. Throws the dummy. Pops the ball up there, the offload, but they'll get the penalty for the high shot. And they asked if there was a number. The assistant referee didn't really... I know who it was, but I'm not saying. Well, possibly Palmer, though, slipping down. Time off, time off, As he went through the hole. Some benefit of the doubt. I'd like a number who's made that tackle, because that's now four. Yeah, I think you're going to find that it's a try scorer. Rob Sherson may have been guilty of just We've raising the arm there. Tackles in the game. OK, so I'm just looking for a number. So there is Aaron Dunstan. Here is the... 
Timo there is the number eight. Man, that's an arm. That's that's a loose tackle. I mean, oh, is that worthy of a yellow card, Ben Castle? Unfortunately, we're in the rule. rules of rules. And whether it's worthy, I won't judge. Yes, I well, I will, because yes. I'll See, be wrong. Yes. You tell me. <laughs> He'll get the number. I'm sure will be spending 10 minutes in the bin. He's made it clear that he just wants the number. OK. Number eight. But it's it is repeated. Fourth, uh, fourth high tackle. There it is. That's the key there. It's four high tackles. We've had four in the game. Whether that one it's a was card. that malicious. It wasn't. Not a lot in it. Big man stepping back, reactionary. We can just but four it. of them in the game, and that's what has led to Rob Shesson having to spend some time. Fourth one. And the crowd let referee Cameron Stone what cool. they think of that decision as well. It was more of a reaction, but as you say, they have put a few high shots on, and so he's been consistent here. Fourth high tackle he deems King Country to have put on, so poor old Rob Shearson will spend the next 10 minutes in the Naughty Boys chair. And we'll get another look at it. Oh, that's a reaction. That's nothing. Do more damage with a cart in the supermarket. <laughs> well, this is testament to King Country's defence. And rather take the three, which is 45 out. Take the dog, fellas! 12 points to his tally this afternoon. It's finals footy. When you're ready. And they have consistently just taken the points that have been on offer as Ben Palmer gets a welcoming Tikawiti style. He struck it nicely, had the distance, but not the direction, and so perhaps a little bit of justice for that man there. I'll be hoping that clock ticks away. <laughs> yes, in, in the bin. Got some subs, time's off, just hold. 15 minutes remain, and some changes coming up as well, KT. Yeah, just for uh, King Country, 16 and 17 are on, so Sam Holder and Jersey 16 and Charlie Henare in 17. Charlie Henare, number 17, big front rower, 19 years old. There he is. They look to play for territory. It's gone straight down. And Tamman knocked it backwards. Gets it to Masoi. Masoi gets it to P. P looks up and steps. And then the uh, welcoming committee arrives. There is Keenan. Keenan can't get away from Dunster. Ball is there. And now they look to try and move it. Tahiti just gets a big shot coming in. That's a beauty from Hinati. Talk about making impact from the bench. They get it wide here. Ratuva needs to try and make a tackle. Mapusanga does very well to hold on to the ball. Keenan in again. That's an awful pass, and the ball along the ground. It's been lost forward. lost forward. By Reddy, that is not a bad hit from a prop, Ben Castle. Oh, fantastic hit. They've made some impact. There he is. Hands on his heads there. Charlie Hanare, 19 years old. There's some big reps on him, and there are more substitutions coming on. Kaltanana. Yeah, we just see um, Brian Mansfield coming on for the scrum. I think Jersey 18 for North Otago. Sami Sondi Tungatung was on. We're just waiting for this. Tungatunga on. He's a big frame as well, so I've certainly got heavy artillery there. Good day in the office for Steve Temuana Nui. He has been tremendous in the 66 minutes. No movement, boys, no movement. Done everything that he could. You can see only seven players in the scrum for King Country. Up against the eight of North Otago. Five. Set. Four. Stay on. Keenan out to Palmer with running ball. Masoi is there, the pop pass. Coming back to set a target for his forwards. Nice and close to where the scrum was. Slow from Keenan. But here comes uh, Colini Sal. Took a little bit of time to wind up. He's done well. As Kalini out to gain five valuable metres. Keenan finally gets it and brings it out. There's Tonga Tonga. With his first carry of the afternoon. Quickly recycled. Limu Lo has been used as their go-to guy to cart it forward. Keenan draws it out again. Masoi. 
Lord, yeah. Nothing over the advantage line. The forwards are there. Lemuel Lowe has got beautiful hands for a big man. Able to catch it easily as Tonga Tonga again gets White. ball and player at the same time. Here is Kelly, John Kelly. Lovely quick hands out to Marsoi. They've got it out the pavement now on the inside. Pass just was not thought forward. Here goes Humada in there. First real chance. The offload to Wise. Anthony Wise has the ball. King Country tipping. They've got players out here. And that's where they decide to move the ball. Atalofa. Ratuba steps. No room there. P is there. A good tackle as well from Mapusanga. Who makes it? Will ball comes and plays halfback to tipping the normal halfback. Four. No one in behind. The kick option is there. They come back the blind side. Here's Perawiti. Perawiti gets rid of the first from PE. No goal. Ball is there. Tipping has it. Patient build up. Wise has it again. The tackle of Darling, the captain. Ball is there. Good defense from North Otago. Here goes Holder. Sam Holder with the carry. And now ball out the back. Will Boar has it. Looks up. The line isn't as good as it was in the first half from the visitors. Church comes in looking for some work in close. Colony South thought that he had stolen it as he has. So the turnover. And now Morris kicks it to where Humada is standing. James Humada. That's a kick inside the 22. The bounce all important. Masoi goes back. He's only five out from his goal line. Thinks about kicking it and then he passes it infield to Halaliva. Dangerous stuff. North Otago from inside their own half. Halaliva breaks out. He's beaten four tackles. Then the offload. Darling gets it. He gives it out to Palmer. Palmer with the big wide pass out to Via Matahu. Via Matahu draws. Kelly is there. Ratuva makes a desperate tackle. The offload again. Palmer. Big hit. Coming in for Mali Ikuda. Ball is there. How did that not get lost? Four it is. That is hit of the week. He didn't come from Tikawiti. He came all the way from Hamilton to make that. What a passage of play. Look at the players. They're down. They are starting to suck on some big air now. Yeah, what a passage of play. Look at the run. Hello, Lever. He just put his foot down. No hesitation. Just taking it on. Ball in two hands. Putting the defence in two minds. He's strong in the contact. Here's the offload. And it's wide here from Palmer. And Via Matahau putting his foot down, setting up. And look at Ratufa here to make the covering tackle and wait for the hit. Here it is. Oh, oh Petawiti, my apologies. I thought it was actually 13 and Muddy Kuda, but it was Joe Petawiti. Hasn't he been good on defence and attack? That, Kaltanana, is one that you go and see the chiropractor on Monday morning. Yeah, well, I just saw the physio and got myself a uh, Nurofen just now, I believe, <laughs> to be fair. But Daniel Alofa asked his players, whoever wants it the most is going to win this game. And that kid and this team just now just showed that they want it right now. That took a lot. Remember the one man down to run that far back and make those types of tackle at this time has been outstanding. Quality player, Joe Petawiti. Tabor in 2012, 25 caps, five tries. And don't forget, early hours of tomorrow morning, live from Twickenham, it is New Zealand against South Africa in the Rugby World Cup semi-final of 2015, the business end of the competition. And then on Monday, it is Argentina against Australia from 4.45 a.m. Some suggesting Argentina might get up and upset the high-flying Australians. I'm not so sure. Ben Castle? Well, they've proven they can do it. They believe. A team that believes is a dangerous outfit. I'll tell you who does believe is that man there and this King Country side. Down to 14 players at the moment. They can't be too far away from getting their player back. We're we waiting for some referee comms. And there is Rob Shesson in the back in there, foot on the knee. He wouldn't be enjoying it. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. We're just sorting it out. Well, the scramble defence from King on? Country and that passage of play. Yeah, it may have been something that happened. Yeah. Okay. I think it's something to do with the subs. And so Brad, that's what they're talking can you just about. Tell me if we can carry on, please. Yep. 
gift game, mate, I think. Yeah. I think there was a stuff up with... with uh, There's a technicality around bringing a, a prop who had already been substituted on. King on replacing James Humada who scored two tries but it's the visitors who clean the ball from the line out through Limula. Now they run the forward. And the control, Keenan has it and releases Keenan to Masoi. The midfield set not held and he keeps pumping the legs. He's done very well. Has Lemmy Masoi finally brought to the ground. Keenan gets it and clears it. Palmer has it and gets it along the chain there. The no-look pass from Hala Levert. Not a great pass, and they've lost it for a little bit too fancy there. And you can see the disappointment from the young man. Yeah, head in the hands. Hala Levert. He was on there. And we'll get a look at it here, the ball out in front. And then the wrap around there, just a little bit of miscommunication, not quite there. It's only a six-point ball game. Now, look at the disappointment, North Otago. They know time is running out. King Country are not far away from getting their full complement. <laughs> Tipping with the feet of the scrum. So just 60 seconds before they return to 15 players. Good work from the scrum and also Peter Witte. Oh, he's been good today. Held on to the ball as well in the contact. He's been good on defense, good on attack. And now King Country start to rumble forward. The valuable meters. The lungs are burning, but the forwards are still working hard. They get it back to Wilbour. He looks for some territory and a gap. Pamon is there. The ball bounces and bounces again. The chase from Church and Ratuba. And he had no other option, but that's a great net gain for King Country. Yeah, that is the play. Willie Lose getting the ball down there, getting it in behind, forcing North Otago to either kick out or counter attack back. They're playing in the right areas. They can sense something. There's some more substitutions, Kaltanana. Yeah, it looks like North Otago have brought on jersey number 19, Matt Duffy, but you're right, just using Joe Petowitz. He's been outstanding, he's been abrasive both in attack and defence. They haven't shut up shot. That's the thing for me, lads. Even though they've been down one play, they've still played some football. Sam Holder in his 35th cap. He's been with King Country since 2009. Gets the call. Seven minutes. First chance, really, for King Country to get some silver, whereas Tipping has it out. They move it along the chain. Inside pass. Latuba. Inside the 22. Pops the ball up. Petawiti. Good as Petawiti hitting, spinning. Presents it. Tipping has it. Front foot ball. Wise. Anthony Wise. Fights and gets to the ground. Tipping has it again. Beautiful pass along. They reach in. They score. Look at the delight. 
it. That's try time. What a time to score kick country. Manuel Alofa over in the corner, reaching out to two fantastic carries. Joe Pitawetti in the midfield. We've talked about him all day. And then Anthony Wise carrying, and then this man here on the end of the chain still had work to do. The replacement player. There it is, they're lining out. Here's the carry from Wise, a big strong carry, getting them on the front foot again. He fights, he gets the ball to the deck. And then it's a mismatch. Palmer on big man, loose forward, Manuel Alofa over. We well, just runs downhill, doesn't he? The big number 18, that's the way to make an impact. Get that up here, try time. Is that the Lahore Cup, staying in the king country? They will be hoping, the good crowd that have gathered here to support their team, the win last week away from home against Bullock. And maybe for North Otago, this was just a little bridge too far. Zane Tipping, maybe he'll get it right on this occasion and reach 100 points as well. Strikes it nicely. The crowd will tell us. Oh, yes! What a way to bring up 100 points in a season. He becomes the fourth King Country player to do so. Congratulations, Zane Tipping. 40 plays 27, but you never ever write off a North Otago side that have been to the finals on 16 occasions. High restart. They go up and compete, and then they fight and bring the ball down. So I'm going to go lost forward. It's lost forward. North Otago guy there. North Otago there, so King Country will get it. And they've got their players back to 15 as well. Sherson is back from the Naughty Boys chair. Well, that kickoff, just before that kickoff there, their captain, Aaron Dunster, making sure his team don't get too far ahead of themselves. There's still plenty of time on the clock. They still have a job to do. They still have to make their tackles, still have to carry the ball. They still have to scrummage. All the key basics of rugby. Set. Solid set. Now they move it out to where Pirawiti comes in at first receiver, just puts his head down, charges, and Tonga Tonga has to make the tackle, and then they offload. Here is Manuel Alofa. Little lovely little pass into Holder. Gets over the advantage line, tipping again. This time, lovely work by the big men along the touchline. Left throwing the ball in. Has Darling, he's got it into payment. And he gets it along. The chain now to Marcelli. Intercept here. King gets the offload. Fodden. They look to try and steal it. They pick. Here comes Big Rob Sherson. Pass on the inside. Well bore. Another offload. It hasn't gone forward. That pass found a North Otago player. And the referee says that let's just bring it back to some sense and maybe go to a set piece. While well, they're throwing the ball around. They're having a good crack in this final. Now King Country, they've got their tails up. Why not have a go there in the right area of the field? See where it broke down. Here's Shesson just going. And then the inside off on Tehata. Will War nearly. Oh, it's off North Otago. So it will be King Country ball. Tremendous performance from King Country. Beaten finalists in 2003 at the Division 3, the Lahore Cup in 2006. They were second best on that occasion as well, but in 2015, no one deserves it more than their captain Dunster, who's played in all three challenges. Sherson scored a try from that position, breaks off the base. Hurts and spins to Sherson. Sherson's close. He scored! He had no right to score that try. Rob Sherson gets engulfed by his teammates and he deserves it because he did everything that wasn't possible to score a second try. Oh, Carbon Coffee off his first one. And look what it means to them. They're all aesthetic. This puts it really beyond doubt with the time left. Two tries. Rob Sherson off the back. Big and powerful and strong, a good platform. The front row working hard. Here it is here, and he goes, he spins. 
And that's when the cavalry arrived to help him. Look at the support work. Foden involved. There's the ball. It's up. And he can reach out. All rights to reach out. Lovely try. Well, the crowd behind you, KT, they're pretty pumped. Well, he's just one of those guys, isn't he, that galvanises his team. You need them in every single side. Guy just does his yards, his hard goes forward, makes tackles, blows rucks. And he deserves his double in this final. He has been outstanding. Even though he's had a little bit of the time to rest, he makes up for it right there. Big smile from Zane Tipping. Beyond doubt. And he's found his radar as well. The GPS has finally joined Zane Tipping. 47-27. Four tries in the second half, three in the first for King Country. And for North Otago, they scored two in the first and just the one in the second. And they opt for the kick out to the right-hand side. Halaleva can't take it. And unfortunately, Zane Tipping can't hold on to it either. So we'll go to the scrum. Goal in from red. Special occasion for King Country in particular. Their captain. What a moment. As he just grabs Manuel Alofa. There he is. Aaron Dunster made his debut in 2003. Played in the final in 2003, 2006. Was the best man on those two occasions, but tonight. Five. He is the groom. Sit. Big scrum coming in from North Otago. Sherson can't do too much of it, but he picks it up and finally tipping comes around and gets it. World ball. And a wide pass out to King. King breaks the first and then tries to get outside the second. Then he throws the ball forward by seven metres. Oh, the crowd even into the ref for that one. <laughs> oh, they're all having a good smile now. King Country know that history will favour them today. Pirewiti, number 12, he's been brilliant on attack and defence. Crouch. Fine. Here come North Otago. They'll try and score another try to finish the match. As Masoi, who's been very good for them today, goes into the midfield. They clear it out and move it out to Sturgis. He's been good for them too. Cutting the ball, the hard working hooker. Keenan goes in. He gets a little bit of attention at the same time. Tonga Tonga gets it out to Palmer. And now Hala Lever. Breaks out of the tackles, he's strong. And they know what a threat he is. King goes in to make sure that the tackle is affected. Dunster can't touch the ball and they get it out to Limuloa. Red, let go. The crowd will tell you. Kolini Sal gets it out to Palmer, out to Masoi. Masoi with a bit of footwork. The late cut, the dummy, the pass on the inside. Lovely fend from Mapusanga. They will have the last say, North Otago puts it down with affirmation. And their fourth try, too little, too late for the visitors. Right, as it's too late now, it's a well-taken try, North Otago, Mapusanga on the end of the line, but King Country, when they heard that hoot up, they have created history, that scoreboard, it will stay like that over summer. And the kick to come, 47-32, they won't celebrate just yet. Captain gets him in the huddle. Great finish from North Otago, KT. Just what you'd expect. Well, they've shown fight all this whole game, Willie. Like you say, they didn't make this final just by fluke. They've shown a lot of heart. And a lot of the times, they've scored a length of the field, tries, and to see their back in their skill, never given in. And in the end, yeah, they do get the last say in this game, but you can't deny it. The home team, King Country, they deserve this one. And he slammed that ball down. Lucky it didn't pop. Ben Palmer. He's had a good day after kicking to his young Ben Palmer. 
Started the match on 75 points. And he just pushes it in with the conversion and off. But the Lahore Cup will live in the Meads country over 2015. Finally, they've got some silverware to show. The resolve and all of the pressure and amount of commitment that they have put in full time here at Rugby Park. King Country win the Lahore Cup, beating North Otago by 47 points to 34. Well, welcome back to Rugby Park here in beautiful Tikawiti, where the hosts have finally got some silverware, 47 points to 34, and it was doubles all round. Himala picked up two, Latuva and Sherson Alofa got the other try for the hosts, King Country, and for North Otago it was Masoi, Afahu scored two, and Mapu Sanga scored the last try of the match. 11 tries in total, Ben Castle, a quality game of rugby. Well, nine years waiting for another opportunity, King Country, and they've done it. The Rams, they have been informed. They are injury-free and, of course, at home in front of a very passionate crowd. Four tries in that second half. Just a brilliant performance. There is the coach, Daniel Alofa, just saying to them, he mentioned it to Carl Tanano at the halftime break, that it's the side that wants it the most will win at the half time it was 2017 there is the beautiful lahore cup and the great man himself sir brian lahore is here and he will be part of the presentation side alongside carl tanana there is north otago they've had a, a mixed season you'd have to say ben but a good performance by them last week well nothing taken away from north otago today they certainly provided plenty of entertainment and the score line 47 to 34 plenty of points they are a very proud union. They have been involved in finals footy, and we will no doubt see them at the business end of the season next year. They were beaten finalists last year in the Lahore Cup in 2013 in the Meads Cup. And so they were beaten finalists, as you mentioned, 97, 2000, 2001, 2013, and 2014. They were runners-up. They had plenty of success, though. Here's North Otago winners. Division 3 in 2003. They won the Meads Cup in 2007 and 2010. And they won the beautiful Lahore Cup in 2009. They are a great side. They have a great coach in Barry Stevens. And they will learn from this. Eight of their players, though, Ben. First season down in North Otago. And if they can hold on to some of them, they'll be a real asset to the province. Yeah, likewise, King Country here. All these Heartland teams holding on to their talent. The King Country side getting prepared for their chance at the silverware. They're not too far away from heading downstairs to the Master of Ceremonies for this occasion. Good job by the officials today. They've done a very good job. There's Cameron Stone, and let's head downstairs to Kaltanana for the presentation of the Lahore Cup. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Willie. I mean, this final fitting of the man just to the left of me, Sir Brian Lahore, outstanding, both teams. Tough, skillful, and heart showing, so well done, lads. I'd just like to introduce the dignitaries up on stage to me. Obviously, to my left, former All Black uh, coach and captain and Hall of Famer, Sir Brian Lahore. Always great to have the legend here. Uh, just, to, just to BJ's left, we have... Uh, Alison Roberts from uh, Pink Bats, who uh, sponsored this year's um, Heartland Rugby Championship. You can see the lovely lads who officiated the game in their nice pink tops. Uh, just to the uh, left of Alison, we have uh, King Country uh, RFU President Brian Carnusen. <laughs> and also uh, just to his left, David Douglas from North Otago, Rugby Football President. Now, just at this, um, just at this time, I'd just like to ask the um, second place getters captain to please come up, uh, Ralph Darling. Come up, people. 
Mate, obviously commiserations on the uh, on the game, but you can't fault the heart of your team and never give up. Uh, definitely, I'm proud of the boys and how we've come back uh, back into the season. Um, just full credit to um, King Country boys. Uh, you guys were more accurate and executed things well. So um, congratulations and enjoy the night. The way you guys kept in that game, though, you never you never sort of let them get away too much. You always kept fighting, especially that first half. They sort of had the first 30 minutes, and the last 10, you really started coming back. Uh, yeah, we thought we were pretty lucky to have that score line going into uh, half time. So we knew if we could keep uh, in touch, we were always in the game. But um, towards the end, we just blew out a bit. The attitude of your players, though, you like throwing the ball around. I don't think you ever kicked it out from your own 22. You always backed yourselves, and that's a lot to be admired. Uh, yeah, it can be um, your best and your worst enemy at times, and uh, today was our worst. Mate, it was entertaining to do that in the final and be able to come all the way up here to King Country and play like that. I mean, I know it's hard to take now, but you can head, have your head held up high and um, good luck for next season, eh? Cool, thank you. Cheers. Now, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, um, name the boys and can you please come up and, and receive your medals. So, Cap. Uh, hooker Sam Sturgis. Just come up, lads. Palinapa Mafi. Uh, second row is John Kelly. And Tawa Limuloa. Number six, Maine Mabusanga. On the flank, Manu Taiti. And number eight, Filippo Vaya Mataho. We head to the backs. Young kid, only second game or third game in. Inoke no Fahu. Got a double today, outstanding man. First five, Ben Palmer. Centers are outstanding today. Second five, Lemmy Masoi. And in the 30 jersey, Aleke Morris. And just the back three, left wing Salah P. Fullback Oscar Palmen. And on the right, Salah Halaleva. Great year, Salah. Uh, just in the, uh, off the bench, we had Jersey 16, Shone Pala. 17, Mele Kolele Sao. And Jersey 18, Summer Sony Tongo Tongo. 19, Matt Duff. And 20, Cameron Keenan. 21, Jason Forrest, and then Juzi 22, P. Liu Tavaki. And also asked the management for North Otago to come up. A big part of it as well. Outstanding year, coach Barry Stevens. Assistant coach Kilifi Fongupo. Managers Duncan Kingan. Graham Pitchers. And probably the hardest, hardest working person of the team, Philip Amasoi. I've left anyone out, come up, there's heaps of medals up here. Now, it's always a tough spot to be, but I thought it was outstanding today, and that's the, the man in the middle, and his assistant referees and TMO. So, um, Cameron Stone, please come up and receive a medal. Really kept the game flowing, did outstanding. <laughs> Maya Williams, AR number one. One of the young guns coming up in the referee ranks. Looks good on the pink too, Maya. John Dusto, assistant AR2, and also my mate, my TMO on the sideline, Grant Stewart. <laughs> Had the perfect game, BJ Records. Come on, Grant. Stop talking to the shield. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'd just like to invite the King Country captain up to the stage, please. There we go, Aaron. Aaron Dunstay's been around a while. Aaron, mate, congratulations on the win. How do you feel? Uh, pretty good, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Straight up and down, but I mean, they made you work for it, though. Yeah, no, nah, it was a bit of a battle, eh? Um, yeah, but we knew that coming into it. Uh, we knew North Otago was a good side, and and we had to work for it, and it was just, I'm proud of the boys for um, keeping their heads up. It was outstanding semi last week to get that win by so much. Did that confidence lead into this week? In build up? Uh, yeah, we, we, um, we had a good D-line last week, and that was our main focus for this week. And um, it came in, so it was good. I know the back end of that first half, they really came back at you, but your coach asked you, whoever wanted this game more would get this uh, Lahore Cup. And a couple of times on defence in that second half, he really had to dig deep. Yeah, no, nah, it was a credit to the boys there. 
they um, one part there in their corner they got away and it's just a bit of character shown by the boys to um, pick them up. Now what did you say because poor old Rob got the yellow card put you under press and then he comes on and scores another try. Yeah, he's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, no he's, a, he's a good man Rob and um, yeah he, he, he paid for it by um, getting that try so well, well done. What, I must say, what's it like after working hard all year to be able to hold this final at home? Uh, an awesome feeling, eh? And um, we just um, like to thank all the supporters for coming out and um, being here today. Yeah. Well, I can feel the support from the sideline. They were willing you over. You did outstanding. I won't hold it up any longer. I'll let you get your medals, eh? So, Cap. Uh, to the front row, we go to the number one, Steve Timuananui. Hooker, Sean Wanden. On the other side, Brian Mansfield. To the second row, Ray Edwards. On our flanks. On the blind side, it's some big carries today. Anthony Wise. Sammy Mason, outstanding. And the guy who was very, very lucky, number eight, Rob Sherson, get up. <laughs> and the halves, number nine, Zan Tipping. Outstanding kicking today. First five, Tehata Wilbor. This kid had himself a game today, Joe Perafiti. Perawiti, sorry, bro. Tawaiti, Marekura, outside centre. The cool fellas in the back three. On the left wing, Ding Church. You see Ratuva, dual try scorer. Fullback had himself a good game too. James Himara. Off the bench we had Sammy Holder in Jersey 16. Charlie Henare. Made an impact off the bench with their last score, Emmanuel Lofa. Michael Foden in 19. Carl Watkins in 20. And 21, Jesse Williams. And in Jersey, 22, Tudanga King. And also I'd like to invite up Matt Ricks and Wilson Twentyman. To the coaches, Daniel Lofa. Well done, coach. Assistant, Gareth Williams. I've heard this name before, manager, Glenn Meads. Colin Hancock, a physio, technical advisor Simon Luoni, and the doc, Joe Fulin. Now, just as the last ones to get in the medals, just like, like to ask the King Country boys to just come to the front of the stage, please. Just come in front of the stage, please, let's. I'll ask Cap to come up here. On the trailer. <laughs> yep. Come on, boys, come on the stage and face out. And I'll ask the legend, Sir Brian Lahore, to step up and hand over to Aaron Dunster, the captain of the 2015 Lahore Cup champions, King Country! They're uh, your 2015 Heartland Lahore Cup champions. And yeah, the irony that the Lahore Cup will stay in Colin Mead's country here in Te Kawiri, Ben Castle. Something special. Oh, they were the better side today. They've always finished runner-up when they've been involved. But them to win, look at those winners' medals. It means a lot. They are very happy. They will enjoy tonight. 11 tries scored in a pulsating match that ebbed and flowed. And don't forget...
There's plenty for you to watch as well. The Super Saturday continues at 4.30 here on Sky with the Meads Cup final between South Canterbury and Wanganui from Alpine Energy Stadium in Timaru. And the big one of the Premiership tonight, the old foes, Auckland against Canterbury, built up from 7 o'clock. And, of course, in the early hours of tomorrow morning, New Zealand take on South Africa from 3 a.m. live and exclusive on Sky from Twickenham. And the second semi-final on Monday morning at quarter to five from Twickenham as well. Great afternoon here in Tikawiti. Hope you've enjoyed watching our coverage of the Lahore Cup for 25. We'll see you in 2016.